It's time to introduce homomorphisms, one of the key ideas of abstract algebra. A homomorphism is a function that transforms a group G into some other group H. And really what it does is isolates and preserves some aspect of G by transforming it into H while deliberately losing everything else. We'll go over the definition of a homomorphism, the definition of a homomorphic image, we'll see a few examples, a non-example, and we'll finish by looking at a couple basic properties of homomorphisms. I'll leave chapters in the description so you can skip around the video as you desire. Here's the definition. If G and H are groups, then a homomorphism from G to H is a function F, mapping G to H, such that for any elements of G, say A and B, F of AB is the same as F of A, F of B. This means if you take any two elements from the domain G and compose them, and then put them in the function F, that's the same as if you had put them in the function F and then composed those elements after. Sometimes this is described as F preserving the group operation. Whether we compose A and B and then put that in F, or we put A and B in F separately and then compose those images, we get the same thing. It's important to point out that A and B are elements of the domain, G. And so when we write A, B, it's assumed that we're composing them under the group operation for G. However, over here, where we have F of A, F of B, F of A and F of B are elements of the codomain, H. And so we're assuming that these are composed under the operation of H, which may very well be different from the operation of G. This is the key property, making the function f a homomorphism. That's a fairly compact way to write it, though, and it might be more clear to you written like this. This is saying the same exact thing. If f of a equals a prime and f of b equals b prime, what it means for f to be a homomorphism is that f of a b equals a prime b prime. Again, it's the same idea. What this is saying is that the image of a product should be the same as the product of the images. Again, the notation's a little sneaky because the operation over here between A and B is the operation from G, which may very well be different from the operation over here between A prime and B prime because that's the operation of the group H. If what this means isn't quite clear yet, just wait till we get to those examples. Now, you may already know what an isomorphism is. Link in the description to my lesson on that topic. An isomorphism is just like a homomorphism, except an isomorphism is required to be bijective, so it puts the two groups in a one-to-one -one correspondence. Notice that we have no such restriction for a homomorphism. Our homomorphism doesn't have to be injective, and it doesn't have to be surjective. But it may be the case that there is a surjective homomorphism from a group G to a group H. Surjective, of course, means the same thing as onto, which is the word we use here. So here's another definition. If there does exist a homomorphism from G onto H, meaning it's a surjection, so everything in H is getting mapped to, then we say that H is a homomorphic image of G. Again, this is only if there exists a homomorphism from G onto H, rather than just into H. It actually has to cover the entirety of H. That means that H is a homomorphic image of G. We will see examples and non-examples of homomorphic images. One more thing, I want to reiterate what I said at the beginning of the video. In a homomorphic image of a group G, what's really happening is that some aspect of the group G is isolated and preserved in the homomorphic image, while all else is deliberately lost. And you'll see this in our first example. Let's let P denote the parity group for addition. Parity meaning even or odd. So this group has the following Cayley table describing how the operation works. If you add E and E, well, that's like adding an even and an even. And so what you get is E for even. On the other hand, if you add an even and an odd, so E and O, we get O for odd, because an even plus an odd 
is an odd. So this is a group representing the parity of addition. Again, its elements are E, which stands for even, and O, which stands for odd. And here's how the operation works. Now, consider this function F from the additive group of integers to this parity group P. The function F is defined as follows. F of an integer M will equal E if M is even, and F of an integer M will equal O if M is odd. And we might ask, is this function F a homomorphism? Well, it does map one group into another group, so to check if it's a homomorphism, we'll have to see if it preserves the group operation. Is F of m plus n the same as f of m plus f of n. Again, I want to point out that the pluses on the left and right side of the equation here mean different things. This is the addition here on the left of the integers, and here on the right is the addition that we described in this Cayley table. To verify this property, there are three cases we need to check in this example, and here they all are. The first case is if m and n are both even, and so we have f of some even number 2k plus some even number 2 2j. Now 2k plus 2j is even, so f of this integer, by definition of f, will be equal to e. Now of course, from the Cayley table, we can see that e is the same as e plus e, and so we could rewrite e as e plus e. But then by definition of the function, e plus e is the same as f of 2k plus f of 2j, since 2k and 2j are both even. And so we see that f of 2k plus 2j is the same as f of 2k plus f of 2j. So the condition is verified in this particular case. The second case is if m and n are both odd. Then we're considering f of 2k plus 1 plus 2j plus 1 which is the same as 2 times k plus j plus 1. Now this is clearly even, so f of this integer, by definition, is equal to e. But e, of course, as we can see from the Cayley table, is equal to o plus o. So we could write it as o plus o. But by definition of the function, o plus o is equal to f of 2k plus 1, plus f of 2j plus 1, since those are both odd integers. And so we see that f of one odd integer plus another odd integer is equal to f of an odd integer plus that other odd integer. And so again, this condition is verified in the second case. The third case is similar to the first two. Here, m is even and n is odd. It could, of course, happen in the other direction, but that wouldn't change the math at all, so we'll just address this one. Now we're considering f of an even integer, 2k, plus an odd integer, 2j plus 1. We can see that is an odd integer, and so by definition, f of this sum is going to be o. Again, that's because it's odd. But o, we see from the Cayley table, is the same as e plus o. And so we could rewrite O as E plus O. But E is the same as F of 2K, and O is the same as F of 2J plus 1. And so we see that F of 2K plus 2J plus 1 is equal to F of 2K plus f of 2j plus 1. And again, the condition is satisfied. So yes, this function f is indeed a homomorphism from the additive group of integers to the parity group p. One other question we might ask is, is p a homomorphic image of the additive group of integers? Well, we just saw that f is a homomorphism between them. If f is onto then that will verify that indeed p is a homomorphic image of the additive group of integers. Now, is f onto? Well, we can verify that with a couple quick examples. We just need to show that every element of the parity group p is mapped to by some element of the integers, and this, of course, is indeed the case, because 1 is an integer, and f of 1 is equal to o, and 2 is an integer, and f of 2 is equal to e. So clearly f is onto, and so indeed p is a homomorphic image of z. Furthermore, the parity group p 
preserves the parity of the integers and how they interact under addition while deliberately losing everything else in the integers. It has isolated this single aspect of the additive group of integers while losing everything else. Pretty cool. Here's another example we'll go through a little more quickly. Let's let g be the additive group of real numbers and h the multiplicative group of real numbers without zero. And we'll define this function phi from g into h defined as follows, phi of x equals 2 to the power of x. We would ask, is phi a homomorphism? Well, to check that, we need to verify that it preserves the group operation, that phi of x plus y equals phi of x times phi of y. That follows pretty quickly from our exponent laws. Phi of x plus y, by its definition, is equal to 2 to the x plus y. But by our exponent laws, that's equal to 2 to the x times 2 to the y, which by definition of the function is phi of x times phi of y. And so the condition is verified. And in this case, it is very clear how the operation on the left is different than the operation on the right. Just want to bring your attention to that once more. Now, is h a homomorphic image of g? We saw that phi was a homomorphism from g to h, but is it onto? Well, no it's not, because phi of x, which equals 2 to the x, is always positive. But h has negatives, like, for example, negative 1. So certainly phi is not on 2. Thus, h may be a homomorphic image of g, but this homomorphism phi doesn't demonstrate it. Two more quick examples I'll let you verify for yourself. If we have a function from some group g to some other group h, where f of x maps to the identity of h, that will be a homomorphism. This function f takes every element from g and just maps it to the identity of h. That's a homomorphism. Another one is this function phi of x, which is an identity function, phi of x equals x. So this function could go from any group G to any other group that contains all elements of G. It would, of course, have to contain all of G's elements, otherwise the function wouldn't work, because phi of x just equals x. Another very simple homomorphism. Here's a non-example of a homomorphism, the absolute value function from the reals to the reals. Why isn't this a homomorphism? Well, the absolute value of negative 1 plus 1, for example, is 0. However, the absolute value of negative 1 plus the absolute value of 1 is 2, which is certainly not equal to 0. So in this case, combining the elements and then applying the function yields a different result when compared to applying the function and then combining those images. Since these things are different, the function is not a homomorphism. Finally, two basic properties of homomorphisms. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving these properties, and I recommend you give it a try proving them yourself. Let G and H be groups, and F a homomorphism from G into H. Then, here's two properties that F has. F of G's identity will equal H's identity. A homomorphism will map the identity to the identity. Secondly, f of A inverse will be equal to the inverse of f of A for any element A in G. So a homomorphism will take an element's inverse in one group and map it onto that element's images inverse in the codomain group. If you have a proof, try writing it up in the comments. And that's what a homomorphism is. Once more, if G and H are groups, a homomorphism from G to H is a function that maps G into H, but not necessarily onto H, such that f of a b is equal to f of a times f of b. What makes f a homomorphism is that you could take the image of the product of two elements, or you could take the product of the images, and they will both give you the same thing. All right, in future videos, we'll have a lot more to say about homomorphisms. I hope you found this video a useful introduction. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these abstract algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description, and it'd be a great help. Thanks for watching. Heard of reindeer to pick me up and slowly get to know me. We'll unwrap each other until we're never lonely. Yeah.